What is up, greedy guts? It's your boy. Big umami. We are deep into December and tis the season to be jolly, but also to sit back and reflect on the year that has uh, just been and maybe rethink some of our ideas and opinions that we've held for so long. I did just that for the last week or so and I realized that I was dead wrong about something. And so allow me to take you on a very dumb but also quite eye-opening journey. One opinion that, for years, I've kind of taken as a fact is that Koala Sampler, for all of its incredible, insane features, actually sounds kind of bad. <laughs> to my ears, every beat that I ever made on Koala Sampler sounds quite muddy and not very clear, at least not compared to the other machines that I use for producing or my DAW. And as a Koala Sampler super fan and aficionado, that kind of broke my heart um, because I realized I wasn't using it all that much because of that very reason. And at first I thought the problem was with Android because I was using Koala on this Samsung phone and we all know that Android audio is just straight. But then I installed it on my iPad Pro and this should be top of the line in terms of, you know, mobile production, yeah? And yet, still the same problem. In fact, go ahead and actually judge it for yourself. In this video of mine, as you can see, I'm discussing the newest Koala update, which introduced the mixer section. And I thought, well, for sure that should solve my muddiness problem, shouldn't it? But then when I exported the beat into Ableton, the difference was noticeable. Uh, the Ableton version sounded much brighter, much clearer, and much less muddy and boomy. I was bummed, and at this point, I could only ascribe this problem to, you know, just bad audio summing in Koala Sampler. And just as an explanation, with audio summing, I refer to the way that your DAW uh, takes, you know, different tracks together and sums them or mixes them in order to give you, you know, your final mix. And whether different DAWs actually color the same mix in different ways, well, that's been a point of contention in the audio industry for years. This topic was also at the center of countless debates on internet forums, all of them being very productive and not toxic at all. And look, I've always been agnostic about this issue, possibly because I'm not a psychopath and I have a life outside of audio production. I always kind of thought that, you know, digital summing should be exactly the same regardless of DAW, but now this issue kind of really hit close to home for me. I just wanted confirmation. I needed to know whether Koala specifically does or does not sound bad. So I started a very simple test. I prepared nine separate tracks, kick, snare, bass, etc. I loaded them into Koala and created a loop. I resampled the loop without touching anything else, so no extra effects, no volume adjustments, nothing. I then exported the loop to my computer, I opened up an Ableton session, loaded the 9 stems on 9 different tracks, immediately followed by the loop I exported from Koala. And it sounded absolutely identical. I also reversed the face on the loop that I created in Koala and the two mixes cancelled themselves out. So we can at least put this to rest. Koala does not color the sound at all. Summing in Koala seems to be as transparent as any other DAW on the market. That's great, but that also begs the question, why the f do my Koala beat sound so then. I figured it had something to do with actually making tracks in Koala. And so I started making a beat from scratch on my iPad. Of course, I opened up my sample pack Big Umami Bombs Volume 1 Version 2. Great product, you should check it out at bigumami.com or at the link in the description box below and started picking a kick, a clap, a couple of hi-hats, a pad, a bass and an electric piano. Something dead simple. I made a pattern adding no effects whatsoever. And once I was done, I exported this pattern three different ways. 
as a fully mixed loop, as audio stems, and as an Ableton project. And to be safe, I also exported the screen recording of my iPad uh, to be imported as audio. Then I opened up the Ableton session and immediately thought, damn, this shit is distorted to shreds. In hindsight, that should have raised the first red flag, but I turned the volume down on all the tracks. Then I imported the multi-track stems. They sounded identical to the ones I found in the project. No big surprise there. However, I then imported the screen rec, and here's where things got very interesting. Of course, it sounded louder, much louder. But it wasn't distorting the way it should have. But then I imported the audio bounce from Koala, and lo and behold, it was super distorted. I hadn't noticed this at all while working on this beat and also you can hear it for yourself in the screen rec version there's no distortion there whatsoever so that could only mean one thing uh, there must be some kind of like master limiter on a software level in ios which kind of prevents at least from like distorting this badly Otherwise, there's no real explanation for this. All right, we're onto something here, but once I match the volumes, the screen rec version doesn't sound that much muddier than, you know, the multitrack. So once again, what the f***? At this point, I felt like I was on Shutter Island here. I swear I wasn't making this shit up. I mean, I have this on video, and then I thought, well, at this point, it's probably my fault. Well, hello, yeah, it must be. I must have done something wrong with all my beats on Koala, you know, to have this kind of idea that they sound, you know, muddy and And so I started going on a bit of a forensic journey on my Samsung phone, where I made most of my, you know, early Koala beats. I look at all the beats that I made in the past three years and picked one I liked, but that again, I remember being quite muddy sounding. And then I did the exact same thing as the previous tests and my god, the levels. The levels were all f This thing sounded awful. Every track was brick to sh And here's where it clicked for me. How could I be so dumb? I left the compressor on hold. That means that as each track was being exported individually, it was being slammed through that compressor with, by the way, doesn't sound all that good. And I stand by it. And that's not all. I went through all of my old projects and I realized that all of them actually had that damn compressor turn on all the way up. Also, I remember using this compressor quite a lot for resampling stuff. And so most of this is actually baked in the actual tracks that were exported, even if I didn't use the compressor on a master level. As I said before, this compressor, it is what it is. It's quite powerful, it's quite loud, but it also colors things quite a lot and it pops quite a lot, especially when you start, you know, the playback. It's not that great. It's probably the one thing that is not that great about Koala. The very one little, little thing. And if you add all of this to the fact that earlier versions of Koala actually didn't have an EQ, well, of course all of my beats sounded sh**. But what about this video then? I didn't use the old compressor in this video and I was pretty careful by using the mixer and with volumes and EQ and blah, 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 blah. Well, once again, I exported all of the stems with all of the effects turned on. So once again, each of these sounds went through the same chain of effects individually. Let's take the drums, for example. Each of these drums, you know, kick, snare, hi-hats and whatnot, they all went through a compressor and an EQ separately. And there is a difference between all of these going through the effects together or going through them individually. There is. That's why the Ableton version was much brighter and much clearer. And so, what's the moral of the story here? Well, that my beats sound because I am a bad producer and I was careless, not because Carla Sampler sounds bad by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, I guess, you know, the compressor is pretty bad, but... <laughs> and also, I guess I can point at the lack of metering options in earlier versions of Koala. Now you have the mixer so you can see if you're going in the red, but hello, I've got two ears. I should be able to understand whether I'm clipping or not. Although, once again, iOS probably has a limiter on the audio. I don't know. Anyway. There is nothing wrong with Koala, <laughs> you probably already knew this from the very start. So I guess this video is pretty useless, unless I leave you with some, you know, best practices when, you know, making beats on Koala. 
So let's start with number one. First of all, check your levels. If you have a diversion with the mixer, it's dead easy. Just look at the meters. But even if you don't, try and keep all of your individual sounds at a medium to low volume. Otherwise, you're gonna be clipping and you probably won't even realize you are. Number two, don't use that damn old compressor. Once again, I'm taking responsibility for my mixes sounding bad, but that compressor is just not good, man. I'm sorry. I mean, even Marek, you know, made an entirely new compressor in the mixer uh, update. So yeah, there you go. And number three, whether you're using the mixer or not, before exporting, bypass all of your effects especially the corrective ones like uh, EQ and compression. Uh, the creative ones, you know, if you're resampling or just exporting a little thing, I don't know, something like a phaser or a delay or a flanger, of course, those are creative effects, so you have to, you know, have them uh, in your export. But anything that is like compressor or EQ, if you're exporting it in a DAW to make, you know, an actual decent sounding mix, don't, don't do that, because <laughs> otherwise all of your single instruments will go through uh, that chain of effects individually and that will ultimately change uh, your overall sound, just like it happened to me. And that's it. As I said, it was a very dumb journey, but also quite educational, at least for me. So hopefully you can get the best out of uh, Koala beat making by doing exactly the opposite of what I did all of these years. And yeah, if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Please go to bigumami.com to uh, check those sweet sample packs. And oh yeah, of course, happy holidays. I'll probably take a few weeks off and yeah, I'll be back probably end of January with a couple big surprises. All right, see you later. Bye-bye.